Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. Today we will be doing Cambridge IGCSC Extended Chemistry Paper 2 Multiple Choice Variant 2 May June 2022 Total time for which is 45 minutes and total marks 40 40 MCQs and one mark each So question 1 which two gases will diffuse at the same rate at the same temperature so to compare the rate of diffusion of gases we have to look at their mrs the relative molecular masses the rate of diffusion depends on the rate of uh, on the molecular mass it is rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the mr because the sl the higher the mr the slower the gas molecules spread which is diffusion so if we calculate the mrs and we have the mrs of two gases same so that will be those two gases will be having the same rate of diffusion so for a carbon monoxide has 12 plus 16 so 28 and carbon dioxide will be having 12 plus 32 because there will be two oxygens in carbon monoxide there is only one oxygen so 12 plus 32 will be 44 so they both have different mrs so not rate they, they won't have the same rate of diffusion carbon monoxide is again 28 and nitrogen so the thing you have to look at is nitrogen exists as two atoms it is a diatomic gas so we will multiply the single mr the atomic mass by 2 to get 28 because n2 1 n is 14 so 2 n's will be 14 times 2 which is 28 so the correct answer is b in all other options there is a difference in the mrs of both gases so this is why b is the correct answer next a student measures the time taken for two gram of magnesium to dissolve in 50 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid which apparatus is essential to complete the experiment so for mass you need a balance and to dissolve 50 cm cube 50 cm cube is a unit of volume and from amongst these we have only measuring cylinder for volume and there is no need for temperature so no thermometer as for stop clock this is for you measuring time so we the student measures the time taken whenever the rate of reaction is measured the time taken is always measured so one two and four option um, a next question three a chromatogram of a single substance t is shown which measurements are used to find the rf value of t so this is basically t and this is the distance it has traveled this is the distance it has traveled and rf value is the distance traveled by the solute or the substance distance by a solute or the substance upon distance by a solvent which is marked by the solvent front so the distance is measured from the baseline so this is the distance traveled by solute and this will be the distance measured by uh, traveled by the solvent so in the options if we look at the options this is three and this is four so we need these two measurements three and four option d next x and y are two different elements x and y have the same number of nucleons meaning that the mass number is same which is number of protons plus the number of neutrons so as they're two different elements so they will definitely have different number of protons because this is a unique property of every element and they should have the same same number of nucleons as they have told us so the number of protons should be different so if the number of protons are different definitely they cannot be in the same group of the periodic table because they're two different elements so let's go one by one they can't have the same physical properties because they're not in the same group as they have a different number of protons and different number of neutrons as well because we have to get the total as equal so if x has more protons it should have less neutrons to obtain the same equal 
for Y because if Y has less protons and it has more neutrons then only we will be able to get the same answer for these two so which is why they will have different physical properties and their atoms have the same number of electrons no because they have the different number of protons so number of electrons is equals to number of protons they're in different groups of the periodic table we we maybe this is the correct answer next they have different relative masses so this is not possible because the relative masses are equal to the number of nucleons so by eliminating every single option we get to the answer c next the diagrams show the structure of three macromolecules p q and r so p is as you know silicon oxide q is diamond and this is graphite to distinguish between diamond and uh, diamond and silicon dioxide you can see that there are two different atoms so this indicates that there are two different that uh, there are two different elements involved while in diamond it consists of carbon only in different in tetrahedral arrangement and graphite exists in layers so p is silicon oxide not di diamond or graphite and q is diamond so option c next which dot and cross diagram shows the arrangement of outer shell electrons in a molecule of hydrogen chloride so they exist as a they bond single they have a single bond meaning they will share one pair of electrons yes correct in every option now the only thing which we can use to distinguish are the lone pair electrons so hydrogen only has one electron which will be shared with cl and it won't have a lone pair so this is correct and this is correct this is wrong this is wrong so and chlorine has is in group seven so it will have a total of seven electrons in its outer shell and sharing one electron six other electrons will be lone pairs so one two and three lone pairs should be there because total was seven so two four six and seven and one from hydrogen so eight to complete the octane but from cl's original electrons there are only seven so this is correct as for here th this shows that chlorine only has one electron which is not true in its outer shell next the equation for the reaction between barium chloride and dilute sulfuric acid is shown which row shows the state symbols for this equation so we know that barium chloride is soluble only the silver chloride is insoluble and lead chloride is insoluble as well as the group 7 uh, yes basically leave the group 7 thing only lead chloride and silver chloride so barium chloride is aqueous aqueous basically means soluble in water so option c is incorrect as for acid acids are aqueous we know they are not liquid so option a is remaining barium sulfate sulfate has insoluble barium and calcium so both are insoluble and that's why they mark solid hcl is an acid again so it should be aqueous so option a next Methane and steam react in the presence of a catalyst. The equation is given 0.5 mole of methane reacts completely with 0.5 mole of steam. What is the volume of carbon monoxide and hydrogen produced measured at room temperature and pressure? So we have the known over here methane and steam. By looking at the question at first glance, you might think that we have to calculate and we have to identify the limiting reactant, which is however not true because both of these are limiting and there is no excess substance in the reaction mixture because they both exist in a one to one mole ratio with 0 0.5 moles of each so we just have to take the mole ratio stoichiometric ratio with carbon monoxide and hydrogen so if 0 0.5 moles of methane so one is to one ratio with carbon monoxide carbon monoxide will also have 0 0.5 moles the formula n equals to v over 24 in dm cube so 0 0.5 times 24 will be equal to the volume of carbon monoxide formed which is not 0 0.5 or 1 it is 12 as for volume of hydrogen so the mole ratio is 1 is to 3 0 0.5 is to x cross multiply x will be 1.5 now again plug in the plug it in the formula so 1.5 times 24 will be the volume 
which is 36. So option D is correct. Next, a compound of element X has a formula X2O and a relative formula mass of 144. So the relative formula mass of 144, this means that the sum of all the substances, the sum of the MRs of all the substances will give the answer 144. So we have, we don't know the mass of X and we know that there are two x in this in the for in the formula so two x's plus 16 will be equal to 44 16 is the mass of oxygen and this we don't know what is the mass of x but we know that it exists twice it is there are two atoms of x so 2x equals to 144 minus 16 over 2 so that will give you 144 minus 16 divided by 264 which is the mass of copper next electrolysis the diagram shows the electrolysis of concentrated hydrochloric acid and concentrated aqueous sodium chloride using carbon electrodes okay at which electrodes is hydrogen produced okay so hydrogen is an is a cation so it will be produced at the cathode and cathode are the negative electrodes the positives are the anode where the anions deposit and cathodes are the negative electrodes where the cations deposit so either two or four now if we look at the ions here we have concentrated hydrochloric acid which will give us only h plus ions no other ions so which is why H plus will be produced at electrode number two. Now A, B are incorrect as for concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. So we know that H plus ions are present over here and Na plus ions are present over here because of this. So Na is very high in the reactivity series and H plus is very below. So Na plus won't discharge and H plus will discharge always. So electrodes two and four. Next, the diagram shows the electrolysis of aqueous copper to sulfate using inert electrodes. Which arrow shows the movement of electrons in the circuit? So the anode is where the anions come and discharge. So the anions are originally neutral atoms, but they become ions by gaining a pair of electrons so when they gain a pair of electrons to become ions now they need to become atoms again they need to be neutral they need to have neutral charge so they will lose their electrons when they come to the anode they come over here and they lose their electrons so the electrons go in this direction so option b is correct we don't consider over here because this is the movement of ions only electrons don't come into contact with the solution itself question 12 which row identifies a chemical change and a physical change okay so chemical change is when two substances are reacted and they chemically react there is a transfer of electrons so this is a physical change but boiling and dissolving is also a physical change evaporating is also a physical change in which only the state of matter is changing as for burning in burning at first glance this also might seem a physical change but in burning we are reacting ethanol with oxygen whereas evaporating ethanol is a physical change so option b is correct next which statements explain why increasing the concentration of a reactant increases the rate of reaction okay so you have to be very specific your knowledge has to be very specific over here it increases the collision rate of particles yes because there are more particles per unit volume so there is a higher chance of collision so more collision lowers the activation energy this has not, nothing to do with the concentration this is related with the catalyst a greater proportion of the colliding molecules have the required activation energies again no activation energy is not related to the concentration there are more particles per unit volume this is the primary reason why there are more collisions so it is correct option b 14 when the colorless gas n2o4 it is heated it forms the brown gas no2 when the reaction mixture is cooled the brown color fades and turns back to colorless which was n2o4 so which type of reaction is described by these observations so n2o4 
went to NO2, but what they're saying is it turns back. So this is a reversible reaction. Okay, so you might think of decomposition at the first statement, looking at the first statement, but it is reversible because the reactant is forming again. So next question, question 15, water is added to anhydrous copper to sulfate. What happens during the reaction? So water whenever is this is a test for water so the copper to sulfate and it is a hydration reaction so whenever water is added to anhydrous copper to sulfate it turns blue this is pure recall all copper compounds in solutions are blue next it is an exothermic reaction this is also a recall you have to remember the exothermic and endothermic reactions list so the option which is correct will be the for, uh, the solution gets colder the solution will get cold if the reaction is endothermic because the endothermic reaction absorbs energy so this is not true it gets hotter as ex the exothermic reaction releases energy next which arrow on the energy level diagram shows the overall energy change for an endothermic reaction so energy change is basically the delta h the enthalpy change which is the difference between these two energy levels so option b is correct next when a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is in operation a different reaction happens at each electrode the equation for the hydrogen electrode the half ionic equation for the oxygen electrode next the electrons that are lost at the hydrogen electrode travel through the external circuit to the oxygen electrode where they gained by the oxygen and water okay so here this they're showing it a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is operated for a period of time and four moles of oxygen molecules are consumed four oxygens are consumed watch which mass of hydrogen is consumed okay so if you look at the ratio it is one is to one so which means that four moles of hydrogen molecules are also consumed so four moles of hydrogen and for the mass we have to do this and gram equals to the number of moles are four and the gram mass uh, the mr will be two because th we have a hydrogen molecule so four two is a eight but there's one more thing to consider over here is that each hydrogen releases two electrons but the electrons gained by the water and oxygen are 4. So this will be multiplied by 2 to get 16. Next, the oxides of two elements X and Y are separately dissolved in water and the pH of each solution is tested. So oxide of X is the pH is 1 which shows it is acidic and y is 13 which shows it is basic or alkaline so acidic oxides are non-metal oxides we know this non-metal oxides are acidic acidic and metal oxides are basic so oxide is acidic that is x yes not y oxide is basic that is why the metal is the basic one so metal is this because i already wrote over here question 19 an acid is neutralized by adding an excess of an insoluble solid base a soluble salt is is formed so we have a soluble salt and the excess insoluble solid base will also be in the reaction mixture because it is, it is because it is excess so it will still exist over there so first we have to filter it and then we can get the soluble salt so first step will be filtration next what we do first is that we evaporate the mixture or the water until the solution is saturated and it reaches it reaches crystallization point the three-fourth of water which means the 75 percent of water has evaporated and then the crystals are found which are then filtered so which is the crystallization part so first evaporation takes place so this is why this is the correct answer d 
क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी अ सब्सटेंस जे टेक्स पार्ट इन रीडॉक्स रिएक्शन इन द रिएक्शन जे गेन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो गेनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इज रिडक्शन इफ यू रिमेंबर द निमोनिक ऑयल रिग विच इज ऑक्सीडेशन इज लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिडक्शन इज गेन ओके सो विच स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट जे इज द ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट सो द ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट is the one who is reduced itself so we know that j was gaining electrons and it was reduced so it can be the oxidizing agent it is not the reducing agent because the reducing agent itself is oxidized and it reduces others so and it is oxidized in the reaction no we have decided this much it is reduced in the reaction so answer is b next elements in group 4 of the periodic table are shown which what does not occur in group 4 as it is descended what does not occur the proton number of the elements increase if we look at the periodic table at the group 4 we see that it has 6 the proton number is constantly increasing so this is not true oh so this is true so this is not the correct option uh, uh, the correct option because it increases this is true the elements become more metallic this is also true this is non metal this is non metal but as we go down we reach the transition elements which are metallic the elements have more electrons in their outer shell now we can look at this the group number equals to the number of outer shell electrons so the number of electrons an element has it is the same as the group number for example group 3 will always have group 3 uh, electrons in its outer shell so op option c is correct meaning it is wrong because the elements do not have more electrons they have the same number of electrons in its outer in their outer shell the elements have more electron shells this is true but we do, this is not a correct answer this is true because the period is constantly changing so the number of shells depend on the number of period period 3 will always have three shells question 22 which statement about acids is correct acids are proton acceptors no acids are proton donors acids transfer electrons to bases in aqueous solutions no hydrochloric acid reacts with ammonium hydroxide to produce ammonia no this is true for bases not for acids when bases reacts with ammonium salt they produce ammonia ethanoic acid partially ionizes in aqueous solution this is true partially ionization means it is a weak acid which is true for ethanoic acid or carboxylic acids are weak 23 which elements have both a high melting point and variable oxidation states so this is true for transition elements so option b next lithium sodium and potassium are group elements in group 1 of the periodic table chlorine bromine and iodine are elements in group 7 of the periodic table which row identifies the least dense of these elements in each group so density increases down the group in both group 1 and group 7 so the least dense will be the element which will be the uh, which will be at the top at so lithium is above potassium so potassium is more dense or is denser and iodine is a solid and chlorine is a gas so it is pretty obvious which is more dense chlorine is obviously less dense so the option correct is option a now question 25 the reactions of metal pq and pq r and s are shown what is the order of reactivity of the metals so only this column is enough to recognize what is the more reactive metal p has no reaction with water so this is the least reactive so not c or d because all others react with water in one way or the other but p does not react with water so it is it has very uh, less reactivity q is slow and s is very slow so obviously s is lower than q so s should not be higher than q s is lower than q most reactive is obviously the one having the most vigorous reaction which is r so option a is correct the number of protons and the number of neutrons in the atoms of elements x y and g are shown which statement about the elements is correct so number of neutrons are different when we have two isotopes 
so x and y are not isotopes because they have the same number of neutrons and okay let's just like let's look at the options x and y are isotopes of the same element so this is not true because they have the same number of neutrons but different number of protons isotopes of the elements are the atoms which have same number of protons but different number of neutrons z forms an ion with a plus two charge so for forming a plus two charge it should be of group two meaning it should have two outer shell electrons so if we write the electronic configuration it should be two six having six electrons in its outer shell so it belongs to group six meaning it has a minus two charge x and z react together to form an ionic compound ionic compounds are formed when a metal and a non-metal react so x has six electrons because electrons are equal to number of protons in a neutral atom so it should have an electronic configuration of two four to make a total of six electrons so it has four outer shell electrons it is also a non-metal so it cannot form an ionic compound with another non-metal which is z because z exists in group six so group six elements are non-metals x y and z are all non-metals so for that we have to look at y two six or two five is the electronic configuration again group five so non-metal so option d is correct 27 which diagram represents the arrangements of atoms in an alloy so alloy are the mixture of metals with another element so and the solids obviously the particles should be close not like this not like this close and there should be two different types of atoms because it is a mixture it is not a single atom it is not a single element so option d is correct it only has one type of this is a metal not an alloy next three metal compounds j k and l are heated using a bunsen burner the results are shown j a colorless gas is produced which relights a glowing splint okay which means that oxygen is produced k a colorless gas is produced which turns lime water milky so carbon dioxide all these tests for gases you can find in your syllabus notes for qualitative analysis l has no reaction okay so oxygen is produced first we can decide for k very easily k should be a carbonate so option b is incorrect and if we heat a nitrate what happens is that when a nitrate is decomposed the oxide is produced the nitrogen dioxide brown gas is produced and oxygen is produced when a nitrate decomposes so either option a is incorrect because oxygen is only being produced while a nitrate is there so either option c or d now we have a carbonate over here so both option c and d can be correct till now and as for l so potassium there is no reaction with l so okay so we know that potassium is more reactive than magnesium so potassium carbonate potassium cannot be uh, heated and reduced with carbon it cannot be separated like this while magnesium carbonate when it will be heated a gas will be released so option c is correct potassium carbonate does not decompose on heating it is very strong next processes involved in the extraction of zinc are listed heat zinc oxide with carbon condensed zinc vapor vaporized zinc roast zinc ore in air so no longer uh, in your syllabus so in upcoming papers you won't have questions related to zinc extraction so we can just ignore this question next which process uses our sacrificial protection to prevent steel from rusting so we know that is galvanizing when zinc is uh, zinc reacts with oxygen before steel uh, so before the iron in the steel so that is galvanizing next fertilizers are used to provide three of the elements needed for plant growth so the three are the npk fertilizer you might have heard this nitrogen phosphorus and potassium are required so we want potassium so calcium is not required this is required and this is not required sulfur is not required so potassium 
nitrogen from ammonium and nitrogen from nitrate and potassium from potassium nitrate so all three are present next which processes produce carbon dioxide so respiration process is a process which produces carbon dioxide in which uh, what happens is glucose plus oxygen they react to produce carbon dioxide and water so this is produced in respiration and the exact reverse is the equation for photosynthesis in which carbon dioxide is used as a reactant and the products are these in photosynthesis so no carbon dioxide is produced in photosynthesis in fermentation yes lactic acid and carbon dioxide are produced so in our body and basically that is anaerobic respiration leave that in fermentation by yeast ethanol and carbon dioxide are produced ethanol and carbon dioxide are produced yes so fermentation is correct combustion of hydrogen so hydrogen does not uh, produce carbon dioxide when it is combusted so one two and three oh, sorry one and three because photosynthesis does not produce carbon dioxide so option a now question 33 which reacts which reaction in the contact process requires the use of a catalyst so we have uh, multiple stages in the contact process this is the first stage and this is the stage in which sulfur trioxide is being formed you can remember it this way when a catalyst is needed and the reaction temperature and the pressure should be maintained because this is the reversible stage question 34 what are the products when limestone is heated strongly so when limestone is heated strongly this is a standard equation for all metal carbonates oxide and calcium oxide which is also known as lime and carbon dioxide are produced so option c monoxide is not correct and hydroxide is obviously not correct question 35 the structure of ester w is shown which row gives gives the name of ester w and the carboxylic acid and alcohol from which it is made so this is the alcohol part and this is the acid part we know this because of this c double o c o double bond so the acid part contains two carbons the alcohol part contains one carbon so one carbon we have meth methanol if you, and two carbons we have ethanoic acid so either option c or option a b and d are incorrect now as for the name of the ester itself we write the name of alcohol in this format methyl ethyl propyl butyl any alcohol we will write it with an y l at the end and for the acid we write it like this ethanoate methyl ethanoate so that is option c 36 ethene reacts with substance x to form ethanol so ethene is a carbon carbon double bond alkane alkene which reacts with water to form uh, ethanol this is what you have to remember water as in steam because the reaction requires high temperature so water is turned into steam question 37 alkenes can be produced by cracking large hydrocarbon molecules to form smaller hydrocarbon molecules which equations represent possible reactions where tetradecane is cracked okay so the number of car carbon atoms here is 14 which should be the total over here as well so in option one we have two carbon three five nine and five so 14 carbon atoms and next we have the hydrogens are 30 over here so 6 6 12 12 plus 8 20 20 plus 10 30 so 30 hydrogens correct next only hydrogen is not produced so this is not correct only hydrogen is not produced but if if it remains uh, the constant the number remains constant we can still select it we have two hydrogens over here 4 6 6 12 20 30 hydrogens and for carbon we have 2 5 9 and still 14 so yes it is possible statement 3 
over here we have only five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms but we have done the balancing for this what we really have to look for though is this is not what we have to look for my bad we have to look for the compounds there should be alkane alkenes whereas this is not an alkane or an alkene this is an alkene but or oh yeah this is also an alkene so maybe let me read the question again we have to see the number of carbons and hydrogens so what we did earlier was absolutely correct correct number of hydrogen and carbon in all of these three and if you look at this the number of carbons is okay it is 14 but the number of hydrogen is not 30 or on the right hand side 6 plus 8 is 24 and 24 plus 18 is not 30 it is 42 so 1 2 and 3 option c is correct next the structures of some hydrocarbons are shown which statement about the hydrocarbons is correct so all of them are alkanes because they do not have a double bond so all of them are alkanes so option c looks to be correct because uh, it appears to be correct we should look at it first this is a four carbon butan butane it is a butane and this it, uh, two and three they're talking about the third one so this is also butane and let's name it so if you look at the carbon chain it is a four carbon so this is also butane so basically they aren't isomers as for one this is not true because different general formula is true when there is a different functional group in question one and two both belongs to alkane both belong to alkane and alkane have the same general formula CnH2n plus 2 so this is incorrect in different homologous series no they are, all are alkanes and we looked at option 3 C now 3 and 4 have the same empirical formula so empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms in a compound so 4 carbons and 10 hydrogens so the empirical formula divide, dividing by 2 will be C2H5 for 3 and for 4 it is yes the same 1 2 3 4 at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 hydrogens so the molecular formula is the same which is why the empirical formula will also be the same ethane reacts with chlorine in the presence of uv light which substances are produced in the reaction so hydrogen is not produced like this yes this is what we desire one chlorine has substituted instead of a hydrogen so this is correct over here two chlorines have substituted instead of two hydrogens so this is also correct because two chlorine can be substituted it is cl2 so one after the another and as for c hcl is produced because the uh, over here if you look at this when the h was displaced so this h was then reacting with the chlorine because it was like this c2h6 plus cl2 this will form c2h5 cl and the one ch which has gone from here will react with the one cl which remains over here because only one chlorine went from these two to the alkane so one chlorine went here and one hydrogen came over here so what will this be this will be hcl so this is correct so option c question 40 which polymer structure has the same linkages as terylene so this is no longer in your syllabus but we can still look at it terylene has two monomers one is a diol and one is a dioic acid c o o h c o o h so when it forms it forms an ester bond like this it reacts like this this is taken out and water is formed similar to uh, maybe you can say nylon no no not nylon nylon is a polyamide you can say similar to pet in your current syllabus so an ester group is an ester linkage is formed which is like this 
so this exists only not in here because it has an acid no oxygen over here no double bond of oxygen over here this has a double bond oxygen but it also has n over here this looks like the nylon and this does not have a carbon oxygen double bond this has both carbon oxygen double bond and the oxygen so this oxygen is supposed to be if we were to be continuing this because this is a repeat unit if we were to continue this it would have been like this so this is what we desire because this is the start of the repeat unit so when the repeat unit again starts over here this would be what will be what will what we'll be joining with the carbon atom so option b is correct so we have completed the paper it was overall a simple paper except for uh, two or three tricky questions i may say otherwise it was solvable pretty easy pretty straightforward so thanks a lot jazakallah khaira